Well, gentle folk, person types, my camera boom doesn't hardly even go high enough to do this bastard justice, but we'll have to deal with what we have. Here we go, a little crack in the back. I'm sure I can splooge something in there to fix it. It'll be fine. So this is the parts machine, or rather the, the stripped machine from Fl the Flea Bay. I don't know if any of this stuff works. There are some other issues. Um, you can see my shitty floor. The, po the power switch is real janky. That's not cool. The reset switch is real janky. That's not cool. Uh, yeah, I think I think I might as well just swap everything over except for the uh, the metal frame and the plastics. Yeah, we uh, we can't even smoke test the some bitch because uh, the uh, lines from the power switch back here to the power supply are, are off. Yeah, this stripper boys. Well, there she is, boys, naked as a jaybird, ready for f working stuff to be added. And looky here, this is our 120 volt AC case fan. It says Whisper on it. Do you believe that? Do you believe that it's quiet as a whisper? I don't know if I believe that, boys. You think it's gonna whisper? You think it's gonna whisper? <laughs> I've got my doubts. Oh, get in there, you sack of shit. Oh, I've got some farm equipment that's quieter than that. Oop. She takes a while to spin up, but by golly, she spins, doesn't she? That thing actually doesn't sound too bad. I was kind of afraid the bearing would be shot. Here's the money shot of the power supply. Naked and exposed. And like uh, all things Model 2, it is large and excessive. Look at these capacitors here. Those are large. Large and in charge capacitors. Goodness gracious. We're going to have to go ahead and tear down the working one then and uh, move the pieces over to the other one. So, since you didn't get to see me tearing down what was left of that one, well, I guess we'll uh, start with the other one and follow the directions. Yeah. So, this here's the Model 2 that was damaged in shipping that you'll recall from the uh, previous videos. And uh, this metal shit's still all bent up. Um, uh, and this uh, this machine, I think, is significantly later production than the other one that we just took the case off of to use. Uh, I think this machine was well. There it says right there. This machine was built in '86, which is extremely late uh, for Model Two production. So that gives me hope that. Uh, you know everything's good on it. It seemed to want to try to work before and hopefully the tube doesn't have much wear on it. I can't see any screen burn on it or anything. Hopefully the disk drive doesn't have anything seriously wrong with it, although I haven't managed to boot it off of a uh, actual 8 inch floppy. I haven't boot managed to boot it off the GoTek either. But um, And this one had the revised floppy controller in it and all that stuff. So. Um, there's a pretty good set of instructions for disassembling these things that you can download uh, from the internet. Um, this isn't old stuff, this is a new document that's been published in the style of the old technical bulletin. So even though it looks old, it's actually quite new. Um, TRS-80 Wiki is where I think this comes from, but it walks you through um, disassembling the thing. Uh, I've only got as far as here. Um, I mean on, on this machine that's underneath of us here. Um, and there are some things that they don't tell you in the directions, like some of these screws, some of these screws are really difficult to get to, um, to take the, uh, to take the, um, 
the uh, all the plastics off of the thing which they say is recommended because it makes some things easier to get to so um one of them back here it's back here in between the uh, the the power supply and the analog board um, you've got to have something some kind of really long quarter inch nut driver um, to reach down in there and get that one out and I don't know how the fuck we're gonna get that one back in um, it's going to be challenging. I may be able to set it down in there from the back with a pair of long needle nose pliers and then get it started with this. I don't know. And there's one in the front, um, up under here, out here somewhere, um, that there's not enough room to get a screwdriver down on top of. So, um, uh, nut driver, I meant to say. So you've got to, you've got to get it with a quarter inch ratchet. Um, but other than that, uh, you can get to those and. Anyway, that's been my experience so far. I think I, I think I recorded taking the plastics off of this thing. I'm pretty sure that's in a previous video, but um, I kind of cheated in several places because it was smashed into little pieces, so that kind of helped get to some stuff. So I guess maybe I should have recorded the previous one, but it was missing a bunch of screws anyway. In any case, the, the shit's all in this document, right? So just go get it if you're disassembling one of these, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully it'll have a sane way to do this. All right, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and completely disassemble this thing, just just so that I can check everything a little more closely um, and make sure that nothing is untoward, and also to document it on the YouTubes for you, gentle viewer. Yes. All right, the power supply is removed. Um, this one does have a 1981 date on it, so maybe that's a service tag that says 86 on it. I don't know. Um, in any case, this uh, this power supply is rather different um, than the other one. So that, that's kind of interesting. Two different models of power supply. Um, this one looks a little better to me. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to uh, take care of some things no matter what. One. Uh, one thing I do see is this power supply does have some uh, AC line filter capacitors there that we'll have to deal with. And uh, this one appears to have AC line filter capacitors as well, but they're not, they're not reefa capacitors. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, maybe this power supply has been rebuilt at some point. Uh, one thing that I will say is I didn't exactly uh, follow the directions on this. Um, the uh, the power supply is mounted on this uh, this metal bracket that bolts down uh, to the base plate uh, through these holes here, and there's actually a uh, one of the screws that goes into the uh, into the plastics goes through this uh, this tab right here. That's that one that's really difficult to get to that you have to get down in between the analog board that I was talking about before. Um, and the, uh, the disassembly directions say to, uh, assuming I was reading them right, say to, you know, remove the power supply from, uh, from this bracket and remove it as a unit rather than unmounting it. Um, I found it easier to remove the whole bracket uh, by using a stubby screwdriver to just unmount the analog board from the back because it only mounts in there with four screws. Yeah, the heads on those uh, screws that fasten the analog board to that uh, bracket are really small, too. You've got to use a number one Phillips screwdriver. The usual number two just isn't, uh, isn't, isn't small enough. Um, and then that'll make it a lot easier to get to all this other shit uh, to get it off of here. Because we will have to get it off of here. We're going to at least have to remove those line filter capacitors. Um, probably have to do some other stuff too. I, the capacitors look fine to me. Uh, they, they appear to be a high quality Japanese brand. Um, Nippon Kimcom. Uh, and these are these are Marcons, these big ones. Uh, so I imagine they're all fine. Um, I don't think we need to replace any of those capacitors. I mean, they are pretty old, but uh, I think a lot of people recap prematurely. And these great big power supply capacitors. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I won't have any of these, I'm sure, but I've probably got all of these. Maybe I'll just recap it anyway for shits and giggles. Uh, we'll see. Another thing of note is, um, if we were disassembling the entire machine, 
uh, which we are. I was trying to follow the directions though this time. Um, when I disassembled the other one, um, I found it easier uh, to uh, take the CRT out and then take out that whole bracket with the analog board and the power supply on it all as one unit. Um, that's probably overkill, uh, especially if you're just taking the power supply out to service it, which is, I, I assume, what the uh, the directions that I'm trying to go by right now are, you know, kind of geared towards. So, since this CRT is going to have to come out anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Uh, that's that's out of order according to the instructions that I'm trying to go by, but um, it's going to have to come out anyway, and I think that once it's out, it'll be a lot easier to get to some of this stuff down here without risking the neck. Um, the neck of this CRT. So the CRT is out. I had a hell of a time getting that uh, high tension lead out of there. I mean that sucker was in there now. And it had actually bent the the socket a little bit but I expect I can probably peck that back down like it's supposed to be. Um, this ground strap uh, isn't actually attached here. It was just kind of underneath of those screws so um, that's kind of funny. On the other CRT it's actually attached and uh, there's there's an extra wire here um, that plugs into something on the analog board that's not on uh, the other one but it looks like it's just another ground. I don't know what's going on with that. That'll be a further investigation. Perhaps we shall learn more when we uh, compare the analog boards out of the things. Now um, when I disassembled the other one, I chose to remove the deflection coil here, but um, when I disassembled this one, I chose to l l leave it on there. Um, there are four wires that connect to these these tabs here um, that have to come off, and um, you have to be very careful taking those off. These uh, these um, these 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 tabs are just riveted on here in this plastic, and. Uh, You've got to support them very firmly when you unplug those wires from them because like all such riveting jobs I expect it is probably really easy to break those off of there accidentally and then you're pretty much fucked probably. The tube that came out of the newer machine, that's an Amperex tube. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, don't know, never heard. Never heard of such a tube. And uh, this is the tube out of the older machine. It's the uh, it's the RCA tube like we would expect. Um, so that's interesting. It makes me wonder if that uh, if that Amperex tube might be a third party replacement of some kind. With the CRT removed, we can just uh, uh, snip a couple of zip ties and unplug this power connector here, and then the uh, analog board comes out just fine. There's a uh, there's a connector here that you could take off if you wanted to snip a bunch more of these zip ties and separate a bunch of stuff. Uh, that's the same uh, the same connector that uh, feeds the analog boards on the Model 3 and the Model 4. As far as I know, um, this is exactly the same as the earlier Model 3 and Model 4 analog boards, so they, they're supposedly completely interchangeable. Uh, so the card cage and the back plane come out according to the directions. However, it is uh, worth noting that um, once again need your ridiculously long quarter-inch nut driver to get down in between the disc drive and this uh, this uh, bracket on the side here to get to those two those two screws right there. Um, I don't know how the hell we'll get those back in there. It'll be it'll be interesting. Um, both of these capacitors here on the back plane um, look a little funky to me. Maybe it's just the way that they were made, but it looks like they've got a little little tiny bit of a bulge in the center. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take these plates off and, uh, and replace those while I've got the machine apart, I think. So as we often see with um, boards of this age, uh, some of the foil layers starting to lift off here on the back. Um, we're going to have to be fairly careful when we, uh, when we replace these capacitors. Here are these, these blue packages here. Those, uh, you might first be inclined to think that those are ICs, but no, those are, uh, those are some old school dip style uh, resistor networks. Um, I don't think you ever see those like past 1980 or so, but yeah, those are just like those SIP resistor networks like you'd, uh, 
like you'd use on a little bit more modern hardware. I assume they're just providing some bus termination here. Um, and uh, that's, that's really all it is. Passive backplane and some, uh, I assume these are some pull-up resistors for certain, uh, certain lines on the bus. And uh, that's, that's all there is to it. And everything else uh, just came out according to the directions. Nothing, nothing crazy there. Yeah, so here's our, uh, our wee precious little tiny um, single-sided, single-density, I think, 8-inch floppy disk drive um, with its wee precious 120-volt uh, AC spindle motor and massive fucking head-stepping motor with a worm gear on it that could probably run a feed auger. And... Uh, complete with a moldy wire down in here. Um, so this this will of course uh, need to be serviced um, if I am able to lift it off of the desk. Yeah, it's such a tiny disk drive. I, I really wish they would have uh, would have used a more substantial mechanism in this machine. Yes, Shugart model 800-2 what what a beast this thing is absolutely I mean like 100% epic uh, like half the reason to have a model 2 I think it's, it's for the fucking disk drive and this particular disk drive um, Actually, uh, like the 12 and the 16, they started using these um, these just absolutely wussy uh, half-height 8-inch floppy drives. They, I don't think they even had a 120-volt spindle motor. I mean, who, who would want an inferior piece of hardware like that? If you can't use your disk drive um, to plow the snow out of your driveway, then what's, what's the point, man? What's the point? Yeah, and so over here we have um, our two 120-volt uh, case fans. This is the one that uh, came out of the machine that uh, donated its enclosure to the cause. And, um, you know, 120-volt case fan, you know, that's that's pretty chad, I guess, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's got a... I think the, f the frame is uh, probably mem. It's not plastic, it's either MIM or aluminum. I think it's MIM though, uh, based on looking at some of the places where the paint scratched off of it. Um, and I mean, that's, that's pretty beefy, but then this is the one that came out of the other machine, and it's, um, it's obviously uh, cast steel, and uh, <coughs> probably weighs 10 pounds, 7 to 10 pounds. Um, probably could beat someone to death with this. Uh, probably one-handed, I think. Um, so this is like the Virgin 120 volt case fan versus the Chad 120 volt case fan here. And if the bearing is any good in this one, well, you know which one we're going to have to put back in the machine. <coughs> and oh, that old computer dust. Good lord. Whew. We'll have to service this disk drive. I'm going to set it aside for now, though. Here's the metal frame out of that uh, machine that got pulverized by the shipping monkeys, and uh, the base plate is um, bowed a little bit in the center, so I think we will use the other one, because this has a, a light sprinkling of rust here and there, too. Probably probably mouse piss caused that. Um, but the other, the other base plate looks really good, and uh, here you can see where these uh, sheet metal side supports got bent up. Um, by the shipping monkeys, and I mean it absolutely destroyed like the alignment of these bottom tabs that the CRT mounts to. And uh, th this top piece was was bent way down in too when I first got it, but I uh, yanked it back up out of there by hand. This isn't very this isn't very thick metal, and uh, I think it's kind of a shame that they didn't uh, didn't use something a little more substantial for this. A lot of the other parts are fairly substantial, but this is just. Uh, this is pretty wussy metal to be honest with you. I could straighten these and use them, but uh, 
since we've got the others that are in perfect condition, I think we might as well just use them. And maybe someone somewhere will need these someday and I can pass them on or something like that. Here are the two analog boards and they are actually quite different from each other. Uh, this is the older one that came out of the machine that donated its enclosure and that's the new one that came out of the machine with the 1986 tag in it. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to look at my Model 4. This might be the newer version of the analog board. There were, two, I think there were two versions of the analog board, but I thought they only used the uh, this one in the Model 2. So I don't know. Maybe this uh, maybe this board was put in as a repair sometime. Um, does it have a date code on it anywhere? No, but it is obviously significantly newer than that one. I don't think I see a model number anywhere, unless I just don't know what I'm looking for. But, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Look at the bare flyback on this thing. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of funny looking. You don't see that every day. Um, there's some kind of jizz on the... Uh, on the suction cup for the for the anode though and some of it actually drips down into the bottom of the machine it's some kind of it's almost like it's coca-cola or something i don't i don't think that's leaky capacitor jizz cuz uh i mean none of there isn't any way that capacitor jizz could have gotten to that part of the machine but i don't know i guess i'll have to clean that up and see this this uh this newer analog board has this nice uh nice molded uh, connector for the uh, for the back of the tube and uh, this one just has this uh, is basically just a vacuum tube socket uh, with the lead soldered onto it right so that's uh, that's kind of funny um, I don't know what what do you guys think I mean these are both these are obviously very different boards they're not they're not different revisions of the same board they are they are fundamentally different uh, this one, this one does seem to have a, a a number on it here. This is a uh, J four twenty two four forty six dash thirty one board. Whatever that means. If you know what's going on here and which of these is the better video board, I assume the newer one's going to be the better board. But I mean, who, who the hell knows? A lot of the time, right? Uh, let let me know because um, I'm going to recap whichever one. I decide to use. Uh, according to what I've read, um, as the capacitors age on these analog boards, uh, the the focus on the CRT gets shittier, and uh, a lot of people mistake that for a bad CRT and replace the CRT when what they actually need to do is rebuild their analog board. So, I'm gonna. I, I'm I'm always bitching about how people like recap stuff when they don't need to, you know what I'm saying? And maybe maybe I'm doing the same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and be proactive and just go ahead and recap whichever analog board I'm going to use. So, yeah. Anyhow, uh, that's it uh, for this time. Uh, next time we'll start putting it back together and rebuilding stuff. It'll probably take more than one video to do that, because, uh, you know, we'll have to service everything as it goes back together. But, um... We've got it ripped apart now. Now the, the, the biggest trick is that you know how I am and I'm like shiny squirrel chasing shit around and I never get anything done because I'm always chasing the next thing, right? So the trick, uh, the trick for me is going to be getting the thing all back together and rebuilt before I forget how it goes back together. So um, if, you don't see, uh, if you don't see the next video in a reasonable amount of time, why uh, uh, give, me, give me a little bit of a... Give me a little bit of a push, you know what I'm saying? I mean, not a finger all the way up or anything, but just just a little, just a little nudge, you know what I'm saying? All right, uh, I'll kick the camera and bid you adieu, my friends. Thanks for joining me. Have a lovely after Christmas day.